I've just finished repairing the aromatic suspension on this 2000 S500 Mercedes-Benz. And I wanted to report to you that contrary to some of the things you may have heard or seen, uh, these air springs, some people call them struts, some people call them shock absorbers, but they're really an air spring, do not cost $1,000 a piece, nor does repairing the system cost five to $6,000 as has often been reported, particularly a few years back, when people did not have the options that they have today to repair these systems. Now, obviously, if you're going to drive it into a dealer and say, fix it, it probably will cost five or $6,000. Now, in defense of the dealer, the dealer's trying to make sure you don't come back in two or three months with another problem related to the aromatic suspension. So if your car has over 100,000 miles on it, they're just going to replace everything. They don't want to have you come back and complain and whine, and that, that can happen. So if you're going to do it yourself and you're going to piecemeal it, you have to be very careful. For instance, this car one day was sitting down in the front on the left side. So it was obvious it had a leak. And as I got into it, I began to realize that the leak would come and go. And of course, I did the, the bubble spray test, you know, soapy water test at the top of the strut like so many people will tell you you need to do, and <laughs> it wasn't leaking. So I'm thinking, okay, where is a leak? Because sometimes it would leak and sometimes it would not leak. Well, as I got into the system and we got to checking things out, I found out the, the, the pump was worn, probably because the pump was running a little more than it should. So I ended up completely repairing the system and it cost me, right here, I got the total, cost me $1,060 to repair this. Now I did the labor myself, it took me about an hour and a half. Now I, granted I have a lift, but I can, can't believe how easy it is to replace these front aromatic struts. They're simpler to replace than a lot of import front struts, okay? And replacing the pump, which is located right under here, you know, only took me about 20 to 30 minutes. So you shouldn't be having a mechanic charge you four or five hours of repair work to replace the front struts and, and the pump, unless you have other problems. Now, obviously, if you have a rusty car that has been exposed to salt and a lot of the fasteners are hard to get off, don't expect the mechanic to you know, give you a credit for that. Sometimes it, some of these parts are hard to get off if they're rusty. But this was a very clean car, 114,000 miles, uh, very easy to get these parts off and back on. And that's what it, and I'm going to have a very nice riding, beautiful handling S500 for the next however long I drive it, and it, I'll probably never put another 100,000 miles on it as long as I own it. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Kent, what about the rear air springs? Why didn't you replace those? Well, let me take you back to the rear of the car and show you the condition of those air springs, and then I'll explain why. When considering whether or not you should replace the rear air springs in your own Mercedes-Benz, there are three things you should consider or do. Number one, obviously do a visual inspection. Get the rear wheel off and take a good close look at the air spring. Look down low, see if there's any wetness. If you see any wetness around this lower area, it probably means you have a hydraulic leak. So that's a true sign for rejection. The other thing is you want to check this dust cover over the bladder and you want to look real close for cracks because if it's been cracked and, and allowing a lot of dirt and dust to get into the air spring, then you might want to consider. Well, this one looks okay. See that? Super dry, no deterioration of this dust cover. So that, uh, that score is a plus. The, the other thing you want to consider is the mileage on the car. This car has 114,000 miles and uh, that's another plus. I think uh, over 150,000 miles, you should start considering replacing these. They definitely last longer than the front ones, but they don't last forever. And then finally, number three, think about your driving habits and how far you're driving. I only drive locally. Uh, at the most, I may drive 200 miles. So this isn't a big concern, but if you're going cross country and you want the car to be reliable and don't want to get stuck anywhere, if there's any question at all, just replace the rear air springs when you redo the fronts. So you see, that was my decision. Now, if I were taking a trip to New York from Seattle, I would probably change them. But in my case, with the driving I do, then I'm going to go ahead and leave those on for a while and just see how they behave because they, there's no visual outside signs 
they're about to fail. Although, if you've been around aromatic suspension, you, there's no guarantee. So this strut is just a beautiful piece of art. You can buy new ones. You can buy OE ones, which are quite expensive. You can buy rebuilt OE ones. You can buy ones built from other manufacturers that are supposed to have improvements over the original. So there's lots of options on the struts. And I, I've even seen them advertise coming out of China or Hong Kong for less than $200 a piece. And the same with a pump. You can buy these pumps for less than $200. And I don't know where they're coming from, but I would highly recommend if you do replace your pump, get a Wabco OE pump, okay? It's just, it's not gonna be that much more expensive. This pump cost me $280. Now I'm talking about these prices here, and these aren't special prices that I'm getting. They aren't wholesale prices. These are prices that you'll be able to find on the internet if you do some shopping yourself. And of course, after removing these, we found sure enough, there was a split in the bladder right up in here that only leaked. The bladder rolls up in there. See, as the, as the air spring comes up and down, the bladder is rolling up and down like this. And only when the air spring was up did it expose the little crack in the bladder and cause this to leak. So a lot of times it's really hard to find the leaks in these, but I could see, you know, look at the wetness here. So it's got, it's had some hydraulic fluid leak down in the lower section. So you may have to get under there. You know, obviously you can just get under there and look at the dust covers. These, both these dust covers were shot. This one was really bad. You can see in the, this picture, you know, just running your hand across it. It had lots of cracks in the billows. So if you see that, suspect that, you know, maybe the, the air spring's not gonna last that much longer. In this case, I could see the dirt had gotten up in there. So as it goes up and down, it's rubbing. And I have a hunch that the amount of dirt and contamination that got inside here accelerated the split in the boot in this particular air spring here. So I decided to change both. Now, if you wanna go the cheap route and just replace one and drive it, well, expect the other one to come right behind it. Same way with a pump. I've done, I've done videos on inspecting these. I've done a complete video on taking one of these apart and uh, inspecting it internally. I'm not going to do videos on how to take them on and off. They're, all you have to do is Google that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that explain how to get the air springs out and back in. There's videos that show you how to remove the compressor pump and get it back in. I do have a video that shows you how I modified the hose arrangement for the filter on the early W220s like this S500 here. Now I know as a final note, some of you can say, Kent, why don't you just get rid of this and put springs in there like regular cars? Well, okay, everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own feeling about this, but I drive this car because I feel it. Maybe that's because I'm a pilot or, you know, I just feel everything right down here. And I would not own this car if it didn't have aromatic suspension. I love it and I don't mind you know, spending a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars every hundred thousand miles. You know, do people complain because their tires wear out or their shocks wear out? No, things wear out. And when you got a high performance car, expect to have to do some maintenance like you'd have to do on a high performance airplane. Okay, so I like aromatic suspension. It would cost you about fifteen hundred to seventeen hundred dollars for the kit to convert this system to standard springs and standard shocks. Well, do the math. Is that worth it? Is it worth it to you? You have to make that call. But in my book, just go ahead and fix it. Do your homework, do your shopping, and you can get this done very inexpensively and less than the cost of the spring replacement. So I hope that you find this video helpful. I hope you understand now why I say I believe it is worth fixing, okay? So if you have an aromatic car, don't give up on it. Go fix it and enjoy that ride. I'm happy to report to you that the aromatic suspension in this S500 is fixed and a recent road test confirms there's no leaks. It's riding beautifully. In fact, it's much smoother in the front end and I noticed that the response time for the, the ride adjustment as well as the lowering and raising feature of the suspension is working much better. Now during this whole process, I did film a rather lengthy video series. It's a seven part series where I go through a number of things that I did to repair this particular S500. Now I've done an on-demand video. It's available for purchase on my website. If you want more information, 
just check out the links in the show more part of the description below because this video is going to cover the following issues which may help you to fix your own aromatic system. This series includes how to find leaks in the air springs and as you'll find this can be very challenging sometimes. I'll also go over a comparison of the original OE springs to the newly manufactured ones that I chose to install. I'll let you see up close the differences in engineering on those parts. I'm going to talk about troubleshooting and replacement of the compressor pump and the reasons why it fails. You know, people complain all the time about these pumps failing, but there's a reason behind it. And if you learn that, you're going to save big money, all right? I'm also going to discuss how to locate and replace the pump relay and fuse. And finally, I'll go over the parts that I use and how much each one costs. I'm not going to specifically tell you where to buy them because you can do your own shopping on the internet. But if you do your own research and you aggressively shop the internet and learn how to troubleshoot and replace the parts yourself, I believe the aromatic suspension is definitely worth fixing and you can save thousands of dollars. So in conclusion, I want to encourage you, learn how to fix the aromatic suspension system yourself. You'll not only be extremely happy with the results, a feeling of self-accomplishment, you'll get to enjoy a superb ride, but you'll also save big money.